Welcome back into American Basketball Media Days. We go from the northeast of Philly out west to Wichita State and excited to talk to these Shockers. First up will be the women, and we'll hear from head coach Keitha Adams, a totally revamped roster for her. What are you looking forward to when it comes to this Wichita State women's basketball team? Experience. Seven juniors set, or seven juniors and seniors along with eight international players. This is going to be a team that, you know, brand new. We always talk about it. When you get this many transfers and this many new players, it's about building chemistry. But I think that's what Keith Adams does really well. And these players have bought into the system. You got Trahada Colbert, who is all about the boards and the blocks. You know, early round exit last year. They want to make up for that. And I think the experience is going to help them do that, Mark. You know, I think the international part of this is really intriguing. I've coached some international guys over the years, but never eight at one time. Right. And so language becomes an issue sometimes. The, the overall communication and using players who are used to playing the international game. And then do you try to Americanize them or do you try to build on their strengths as international players? I struggled with that as a coach. And it'll be interesting to see how Keith Adams balances that with eight international players. Let's hear from Coach Adams right now. She is ready with us via Zoom. And I'm going to turn things over immediately to Chuck Sullivan with the American who will get things going with some questions from the media. Thank you, Morgan, and welcome, Coach Adams. Uh, we'll take questions from the media, please. For those who just joined us, please use the raise hand feature uh, in the Zoom to get into the queue. We'll take questions in the order in which they come in. Again, just use the raise hand feature, please. And we'll start with Sully Engels, please, from Cake, AKE TV in Wichita. Hey, Coach. Um... Just wanted to know, you know, the first couple of formal days of practice, you know, we talked a lot about how excited you were about this new roster and this new team and, and what you're bringing back, but how have things gone so far and, and how are you feeling at this point? Practices have been great. Um, we've been working really hard. Uh, one of the things I, I really like about our team is they're very competitive and very spirited. Uh, so it's been, it's been intense and fast paced and we've been off to a good start. Um, and two, you know, when you see those preseason rankings come out, obviously everyone kind of takes that with a grain of salt. But for you, how do you kind of take that? Do you look at it more as a, you know, maybe something that, <clears throat> excuse me, puts a little like more kind of fire under your your team, or, or just something you just kind of totally disregard? Well, I'm ready to go practice right now, so I can tell you what it does uh, and what it's going to do for our team is it's motivating. Um, you use that for motivation, and uh, it should motivate you. So. Um, you know, we have a great deal of respect for uh, the players and the, and the teams in our conference, and there's great coaches. Uh, so we know that it, this conference is, is legit and it's very high level of play, uh, but we definitely will take this and, and use it as motivation. Cool. Thanks, Coach. Coach, six. Coach Morgan Uber here in the studio. Six transfers on your roster, one of those being Curticia Dean, a transfer from Seton Hall. You were really persistent about recruiting her back in 2020. You finally get her through the transfer portal. How is she living up to your expectations? What's impressing you most? Oh, it's been great. Uh, she goes by Nunu, and uh, we, really, we really recruited her hard from Trinity Valley. And uh, when she went in the transfer portal, uh, we circled back and – uh, very good player. She's a really good guard that uh, makes plays and makes plays when uh, her team needs it. And uh, the confidence that I have in Nunu is very high uh, because I had an opportunity to watch her play a lot. Um, and she's a very good ball player. So we're, we're thrilled about having her. Coach Brooke Weisbrot here in the studio. I, I know you're looking forward to, to having that experience along with the, the international flavor. I do have a question about that flavor. Have you all had any kind of like potluck dinner or have you been introduced to any new tastes and cultures on your team yet? Well, uh, the fun thing about having the international players is when we have birthdays, we usually sing a happy birthday in all the different languages. So that, that makes for a, a special day for whoever's birthday it is. Um, Christmas time, we usually have an international meal over the holiday break where uh, my assistant coach, uh, Eva Laskowska, she, she always does a great job with her being from Poland and Europe. Uh, so we get into some of that international cuisine uh, most definitely. But, uh, you know, there's, it makes it a lot of fun. I, I think the awesome thing about this group is uh, they really like one another and they've got a great camaraderie with one another. Um, 
you know, I think the diversity is a great thing because uh, you learn a lot about yourself and you learn a lot about each other. And uh, but the one thing that's that's true is a pick and roll in in Spain is a pick and roll in Wichita, Kansas. And and uh, so we love that we share something that everyone has in common. Uh, but yet you do have a lot of differences because of where everybody comes from. But that makes for it to be a very, a very fun and uh, interesting day every day. Coach Adams, this is Mark Adams, and we're probably related somewhere down the line is my guess. <laughs> but I noticed that in your high school career that you, you coached volleyball, softball, and track, and of course now basketball. What did you learn from that diverse coaching experience that, that you now apply to the Division I coaching at a great place at Wichita State? Well, you know, starting out uh, being a high school teacher, uh, you're in a classroom, six classes a day, and you've got uh, all walks of life coming in. And so I think being a, a public ed uh, teacher right out of the gate at 22 uh, was a great experience for me. I think that coaching all those different sports uh, was also a very learning experience. My diversity experience really uh, happened for me uh, when I went to Independence Community College, and that's where uh, we had international players, we had inner city players, we had country players. We, we had a little bit of everything, and I absolutely loved it. And from that point on, I've always uh, recruited diversity. Uh, my staff is diverse, um, and it's something that I've enjoyed. I believe in it, and I think it's great for uh, developing young women. Uh, we've had a lot of players that have gone on and played professional and I think them being on a team where they experience that, um, especially for our um, American players, then when they go overseas, they've already experienced a lot of the things because of their experience with us. So um, it's something I believe in, and I've truly been blessed uh, to work with a lot of young ladies from all over the world. Coach, working with women from all over the world, you gave them really the true Midwest experience by taking them fishing, one of the best activities I saw from the off season. Who caught the biggest fish? Well, let's see. Uh, Anaya Bell, she caught the biggest fish. Um, it's funny, we, uh, we, the first time we went fishing at my house, the weather, it was cold, it started raining, and they were like, Coach, are we still going fishing? And I was like, I was kind of caught off guard. I didn't think they would want to because it was cold and rainy. And, <laughs> and then, uh, so we did, and, uh, and uh, they wanted to do it again. And so the next time, um, it was a great day. It was warm, sunny, um, and we had live bait, and we caught 19 fish. And we divided up the teams. We had two teams. Wow. So the team that won got, gets to pick a day that they don't have to do conditioning. Uh, the player that had the biggest fish uh, gets a day off of conditioning and the one that had the <laughs> longest fish. So we made it a competitive, and, and that's what's been kind of fun with this group that uh, seems like no matter what we do, uh, they you do things and you set it up to where it gets competitive, they get very into it. And uh, we've had TikTok uh, competition um, and even got heated during that. So the thing that I've learned about this group is they're very spirited and very competitive, which I think is great. Um, when you get on the court, that will transfer over. You'll see us be very competitive. No days off. Everything a competition. Coach, I love it. Thank you so much for taking the time and really looking you forward bet. to seeing you here out of the court in just a few short weeks. Thank you. Mark, when you think about a whole new roster for Keitha Adams to hear taking them fishing, they went to the yeah. Humane Society, played with dogs. I mean, just the, the chemistry that she's trying to create in her team, how is that going to transfer so quickly on the court? You know, Morgan, I, I love the question that you brought up about it because oftentimes we see players and coaches as avatars. Fans, fans see that. They see a player out there. It's like a video game. Mm -hmm. And they treat them as such. And, and, and sometimes even we as broadcasters treat them as such. These are people. And these are coaches who come from a high school background that coach multiple sports and believe in diversity of thought, diversity of people, and are bringing all that together under one roof at Wichita State in the, in the middle of, of the Midwest. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, I think, a fascinating dynamic, and that's why I love the research that both of you do because it, it, they're no longer avatars. They're people. And, and now we see what Wichita State is doing to bring people yeah. along versus just players to play in front of crowds. And you said no days off. 
unless you catch the biggest fish. <laughs> I'm going to go fishing with Coach yeah. Adams because yeah. I can't seem to get a bite, but hearing they caught 19 fish. Hot, uh, frozen hot dogs. I know y'all use live bait, but I'm telling you, frozen hot dogs also work very well. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Really excited to see how this team gels on the court after experiences like that. And we're going to hear from one of her players here shortly, Trajada Colbert. And, you know, when you look at this Wichita State team and just the history of basketball as a whole there, mm. I mean, you know, how is she going to be able to carry that over here with this new program? I think the fan support, you know, and, and it comes from building the community, getting out there, team bonding. You know, people are going to respond to a competitive team. You want to watch those types of teams play hard for you. And it starts with doing, you know, the Leo walk. You're holding hands in practice. You give somebody a good job. You have potluck dinners to celebrate cultures. You have TikTok challenges. Competition, especially in women's basketball, is extra healthy. You know, you sort of expect it on the men's side. And on the women's side, when you can really breed a, 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 a practice that looks like that, where everything is a competition, you're going to get a team with an edge. And like we said before, to win in this league, you got to have an edge. Trajada Colbert is ready, and she's standing by. Trajada, with you having four younger sisters and, and hearing from Coach Adams the high level of competition, even fishing, uh, you know, how did that really help you here at Wichita State amongst your teammates? Um, well, with my sisters, uh, we are very competitive. Even though they're much younger than I am, I feel like we always <laughs> fought for my mother's attention. So I felt like we were kind of competitive in that aspect. And then just like... Um, when we play sports outside, um, we break up into teams, and everybody wanted to be on my team because I'm the oldest and the biggest, and um, I make the rules. Um, so I, kind of, I feel like that's where I get my competitiveness from. I love, I love this spirit, and, and the fact that you called your teammates your sisters. Where did that start from? Um, it was actually started from uh, Coach Adams. I think it's something that um, she always wanted us to be, feeling connected, calling each other sisters, um, being a family. And I feel like that really helps us on the court. You know, when you look at the, the international part of the team, we've, we've touched on it. What are some things that, you know, that you've picked up from some of your teammates that you never knew before and, and maybe even, you know, start to take into your own life? Um, I feel like um, having international teammates, um, they really bring in um, – a different culture, and I feel like it just um, shows me um, a different side of the world that I've never seen before. I never traveled to Europe before, so I feel like uh, more Africa, um, Canada, um, just where my teammates are from. Like I feel like that's just really um, brought into a different mindset for me that I could take in um, when I go into my profession, um, just seeing people of different cultures and understanding that not everybody is the same. Jada, we now have some questions from the media. So we're going to send things over to the Americans' Chuck Sullivan to take it away. Thanks, Morgan. We'll take our, our first question from Sully Engels from KAKE TV in Wichita, please. Hey, what's up, Jada? How are you? Hi, I'm good. And you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, so for you this year, you know, fifth year, obviously – you were such a presence for this team last year, as you mentioned, you know, being the oldest sister, you got to have that sense of leadership. You got to have that sense of, of just kind of being able to, to will a group to do something. How important is it for this team with, with so many new girls on the roster to be able to kind of be the, the strong point and show them how you play shocker basketball? Um, can you say that question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just, you know, for you being a fifth year senior, how important is it for you to just kind of take on a leadership role and, Show everyone that's new to the program how you play the game. Um, well, I've been here a very long time, and I feel like I really understand Coach's system and what she wants from us as um, players. And I feel like um, I probably know that the best, and I just feel like as a leader, um, just showing my teammates that, um, showing our defense, um, how we should work together, how we should communicate together. Um, and I feel like... Another thing would probably be just uh, being a good voice for my teammates, um, just echoing my coach, um, showing them what she wants from us. And also, you know, it, when you see where you're ranked in preseason for the conference, 
Um, obviously, now where you be, does that light a fire under you, or what does that do? You know, coach said she wants to get straight out on the practice floor. What does that do for you? It definitely motivates me. Um, just like Coach said, uh, I want to go practice right now. Um, I want to tell my teammates uh, we have to work harder. We have to be better because tenth is too low. And I know the team that I have. I know the teammates I have. I know the coaches that I have. And we're better than tenth. Thanks, Rashad. I appreciate you. Thank you. We'll take the next question, please, from Emmy and Bosi. And I apologize if I mispronounced that uh, with the sunflower. <laughs> Awesome. Hi, Jadrata. Yeah, so I know that you guys um, exited uh, the first round against Tulsa in the AAC tournament. Um, and I know we kind of, you know, talked about your guys' preseason ranking, but what's, you know, I know the goal is to always win, but what, what's kind of uh, the goal that, what, what are you guys kind of talked about in terms of, you know, getting further in that AAC tournament and making it further in postseason? Um, I feel like a big thing is just our practices. Um, Coach always says you practice how you play. Um, well, you play how you practice, and I feel like every day in practice we have to come out, we have to work hard, we have to get better in order to perform well in games. Chajada, one of your teammates, DJ McCarty, injured most of the last season dealing with an ankle injury. What did you really admire most about her resiliency, and how exciting is it to have her back on the court with you this season? Um, I feel like DJ, she really worked hard to get better um, physically, and I really like... Um, DJ's competitive, competitiveness, um, I feel like she's probably one of our most vocal um, when it comes to being competitive. Um, she likes to make everything a game. She likes to compete. She likes to scrimmage. Um, and I really admire that about her. Mm -hmm. Jada, earlier you mentioned that you are working with a lot of the international players and that you've become a team leader. I'm curious, and, and you talked about your, your future opportunities, possibly professionally. I'm wondering, those leadership lessons you've learned globally now, how will you apply that to this team and to your future endeavors? Um, I think mostly just being understanding of my teammates, um, understanding their differences, um, and just uh, being more vocal. Um, in my future endeavors, I think I want to go into college coaching. So I feel like um, being... Um, exposed to the different diversity um, that I have on my team. Um, it will help a lot in that. Very cool. Jojada, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really looking forward to seeing you guys tip off here in just a few short weeks. Thank you.